We don't ask questions like that. Stop asking questions like that because... In this thought-provoking exchange, Danny, an atheist student, challenges Frank Turek on the design argument and its logical foundation. If everything in the universe is created by God, how do we distinguish between what is designed and what occurs naturally? Can we separate divine intervention from natural processes? Or is the concept of design inherently circular? Danny presses these tough questions, putting the design argument to the test. Watch as Frank Turek unpacks the reasoning behind intelligent design and responds to these deep philosophical challenges. Stay tuned for a compelling discussion. Yes, hi, what's your name? Hey Frank, I'm Danny. Say again? Danny. Dan, Dan? Danny. Danny, go ahead. Yeah. Um, and just for a warning, I suppress the truth and unrighteousness. I'm an atheist, so bear with me. Um, I have a question about, earlier you said that good and evil were somewhat codependent, that th in order to have a concept of good, you also had to have a concept of evil recognized. What evil was, you had to know what good was. You could know good without evil, but you can't know evil without good. All right. Okay. Right. So having established that, when I look at or ponder your design argument, um, if you think God is the creator of all things, that means everything is created, everything is designed. So what are you using to compare uh, a design thing versus an undesigned thing to recognize that something like DNA is actually designed? Yeah, because in every other instance we see genetic code, we know it always comes from a mind. So, for example, if you're walking along the beach and you see in the sand, John loves Mary, you don't say, well, the crabs did that, right? Or the waves lapped up against the sand and made John loves Mary in the sand. We know how that had to be an intelligent being, right? This is why when we train our telescope, our telescopes, our satellites uh, out into the atmosphere, we're looking for certain patterns in the radio waves, this is called SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. If we get a certain pattern, we'll know there's intelligent life out there because natural laws themselves don't create the kind of what is known as specified complexity that a message is. So we know that messages always come from minds and when we see in a living thing a message that's 3.5 billion letters long in every one of your 100 trillion cells, we go, intelligence. But I think the way to my question, I mean, do you think there's anything that hasn't been designed? Anything? Uh, you mean anything in the in space-time continuum? Right? Anything in the universe. The cosmos was created by God, so it follows that everything in the cosmos was created by God and designed. So there's nothing that you compare to say that something's designed versus is und undesigned. Well, no, because you know that nature by itself will take things to disorder. Like, for example, Nature will take a building like this and turn it into a pile of bricks, but nature will never take a pile of bricks and turn it into a did building. What did God create what? Did God create all natural forces, natural laws, natural... Yes, I think God created the natural forces and sustains them, yes. Okay, so those are created things, they're designed things, so that you can't use that as a, as a model to, for an undesigned thing. Well, I think the fact that natural laws are so precise and consistent and are fine-tuned, that is more evidence of a divine being. But the fact that those natural laws don't create specified complexity, it would require more intelligence to come in and create a specified complex thing like a cell. Sorry, may I not understood your answer. Is there anything that you think that exists today in the cosmos that's not created or, unde or anything that's undesigned? Well, it depends on what you mean by that. There are things... Anything in the cosmos. Anything. Atoms. I, 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 I'm, trying to, I'm trying to understand the direction of your question here because if we go outside right now and we see dirt out there... God created that. Well, God created the planet, but the dirt may be in such a configuration that the natural laws working on it have made it just be in a random way. But if we went out there and the dirt was pressed into bricks and there was a wall built around the tree, we'd go, okay, that dirt has had intelligence put on it in order to create this wall. So we can still tell design, even though if everything is designed, we can still tell design uh, from an illustration like this because we could see dirt left to itself doesn't create a wall, 
but dirt put into brick form can create a wall if you put intelligence on it. I think the way I'm interpreting your question is that we can tell when humans interact with the world, mm -hmm. but in terms of God interacting with the world, there's no way to tell because everything serves as God's creation. Yes, everything is God's creation, but we can see where, in fact, what you, what you can do is you can take the natural laws, which atheists don't explain. In fact, uh, who was it? Um, stop me. Uh, gee. Paul Davies from Arizona State University, an agnostic, in 2006 wrote an editorial in the New York Times said, taking science on faith. And basically we're saying, where do the laws of nature come from? And everybody who was an atheist or an agnostic wrote to him and said, we don't ask questions like that. Stop asking questions like that. Because the natural laws that drive and govern the universe seem to have a designer behind them. And so we agree there's a designer behind them, except the atheists don't want to ask that question. Why do the natural laws exist? But the natural laws do the same thing over and over again. They don't create specified complexity, just like they don't create our illustration of a, a wall around a tree out here. So we can tell design, even if everything is ultimately at its foundation design. I was sort of granting that everything was designed, but I... I the questions raised by Danny in this conversation with Frank Turek challenge the design argument at its core. They force us to examine how we recognize design how we differentiate between divine creation and natural occurrences, and whether the design argument is logically consistent or merely circular reasoning. Let's break down these questions and address them one by one. The ability to recognize design is based on patterns, complexity, and purpose. When we encounter something highly structured, such as genetic code, fine-tuned physical laws, or complex biological systems, we instinctively recognize intelligence behind it. Turek points out that messages such as John Loves Mary, written in the sand, imply a mind behind the information. In the same way, DNA, which contains billions of precise instructions for life, suggests an intelligent source. The key principle in recognizing design is specified complexity, meaning something is both complex and ordered in a way that serves a purpose, which natural processes alone do not produce. Danny argues that if everything in the universe is designed, then there is no way to distinguish between what is designed and what is undesigned. However, this assumes that all forms of design must look alike. In reality, we distinguish intelligent design from natural patterns based on whether something could reasonably arise from natural laws alone or whether it requires an intelligent agent. For example, a sand dune formed by the wind is shaped by natural forces alone. A watch found in the sand has mechanisms that serve a purpose and require intelligence to assemble. Similarly, while mountains, rivers, and clouds are shaped by physical processes, things like DNA, complex cellular systems, and mathematical precision in physics, display characteristics beyond natural occurrences, pointing to a designer. This question implies that if everything is designed, then nothing can truly be recognized as a product of design. However, Turek responds by making a crucial distinction. While God created the universe and its fundamental laws, natural processes operate within that system. This means that some patterns and arrangements arise naturally, but the underlying system itself is a product of design. A pile of art random dirt might not show specific design, but the unlaws governing dirt gravity, and physics were designed. A house built from bricks is clearly designed, but the raw materials, mud, sand, stone, exist naturally within the created order. Thus, while everything ultimately traces back to God's creation, 
not everything is actively shaped by direct divine intervention. Some things arise from the laws and forces that God established. Danny's final question probes whether we can tell when God actively intervenes in the world versus when things happen through natural processes. This is where miracles play a crucial role. The laws of nature provide a not consistent framework. But on miracles, such as the resurrection, stand out as events that cannot be explained by natural means. If everything was purely natural, miracles would be impossible. But since the universe operates under a designed system, the designer can choose to intervene supernaturally when he wills. Danny's questions reveal a thoughtful skepticism. But they also highlight a misunderstanding of the design argument. Recognizing design in the universe does not require comparing it to something completely undesigned. Rather, we see design in the presence of unspecified complexity, order, and purpose. While God is the ultimate creator, natural processes operate within his creation, and divine intervention is recognizable when something occurs outside of what nature can explain. The evidence of intelligent design stands firm, offering both philosophical and scientific grounds for belief in a creator.